So I got me an SNES Classic. It's really nice. Build quality is super. It looks almost identical to the original SNES. My one main problem with it is it's missing some games that I would have liked to have seen on there. I'm not gonna go too deep into adding a bunch of games, but there was one that really stood out for me. It's one of my favorites and I think a very underrated game, and that is Secret of Evermore. Now, I this is actually my original cartridge that I bought when I was in high school. As you can see, it still has the uh, family crest on it. Uh, I think it's my, my mom's or my dad's handwriting. You know, they wrote, they wrote the family name on, on all the cartridges, so we kept track of them because I had shady friends. So I have a backed up ROM of this that I'm going to install on my SNES Classic. As far as the backing up of the ROMs is concerned, I actually don't have the device that it takes to do that. So uh, maybe down the line, uh, we'll do another video where I cover that. Let us jump into installing a new ROM on the SNES Classic. Okay, so this is probably gonna be a short one. I don't know how involved this process is, but uh, let us see. Okay, here I am on the GitHub website and I got Hackchi2. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the SNES Classic into the PC. So that's downloaded. Now I'll just close that. Okay. Just download onto the desktop, so we're just gonna go right here. I, I think this is different, so we're gonna open up this one. Okay, that actually created a lot of files. Let's see, did I double click it? There we go. Original games, okay. Okay. And this appears to be the, is it, is this already detecting the SNES? Do I use a third party emulator for this game? It needs to be installed, no. It says it's not going to work, but I'm, I'm just gonna roll the dice on it so I don't have to worry about a third party emulator. Okay, I skipped a step. Okay, so... I think I just installed a driver. Make sure the power button on your SNES is switched off. Hold the reset button and turn on the power. After a few seconds, release the reset button and it's uploading the kernel. Done, you can upload games to your SNES Mini now. All right. Okay, so I put the cart before the horse, so I don't know if the game installed or not. So I'll, I, I don't even know how to confirm that. Oh, synchronized selected games, the SNES Mini. Done. Is that it? Am I done? Done, done? That was actually really easy. So I'm gonna now turn it on and see if it worked as intended. new splash screen, fair enough. Okay, everything seems to be working as expected. Uh, there we have it. Yeah, game looks like it's performing well. I. Intro is so long on this. Um, I don't know if I want to go through the whole. Oh no! I'll just let it let it roll. 
with a twist of the knob here and a flip of the switch there. Wait a minute, that's not right. Okay, I'm just letting the intro go until I get to a playable point because I just want to make sure the controls, you know, do what they're supposed to. Okay, now we'll get some action. There we go. <laughs> but okay, well, it appears to be in working order. I appear to not be though. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, the game is in there and it is good to go. It was actually insanely easy to do that. And it appears this works for the NES and the SNES Mini. So there is that as well. At any rate, I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, mod foray of modding the SNES Classic. Like I said, I just wanted to add that one game in there. Might add more later. I do have all of my original SNES cartridges. So at some point we'll be uh, pulling those ROMs and maybe throwing them in there. We'll see. I uh, thank you guys for tuning in. If you did like this video, let me know. And if you didn't, let me know for sure. And until the next one, I will see you guys later.